Hello and welcome to Writing Today. In this episode, I'm going to be giving you some insights into the cyberpunk genre, as well as some advice for writing it. As always, if you want to read this article, you can find it on my website, thependsleuth.com. There's a link to that in the description below. And if you enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Now, cyberpunk is the subgenre of science fiction. As one can tell if you could look at any cyberpunk movie or read a cyberpunk novel. The word cyber itself is referring to the fact that it is typically set in a dystopian future with some cybernetic enhancements to the characters. So there is some pretty cool technology to talk about. The punk part of the cyberpunk name means that the story will be typically focused on the underworld of this dystopian space. Cyberpunk stories tend to highlight the desire for power that all man has, as well as the decline in morality over the many hundreds to thousands of years. With that said, let's get straight into some advice when it comes to writing the cyberpunk genre. First, let us discuss the world space. The world of cyberpunk is a mixed bag of beautiful tech that inspires and grungy tech scavenged by the desperate. The same rules apply to people, buildings, cars and every other aspect of society. There is always a higher ground where things are better than you can imagine and then there is a lower ground where things are worse than your nightmares. Everyone is doing their best to work their way up the food chain. It doesn't matter if their methods are morally sound. In most cases, they should abandon their morality if power and prestige are what they are after. To nail this dystopian society, you need to emphasize the fact that anyone might stab you in the back to achieve the freedoms that we take for granted today. The ruling powers have almost absolute power over the people, with police forces armed to the teeth with technology that makes them fast and scary, and common things become status symbols, underlining the decline of resources and freedom. If you want a good example of this, I recommend you read the book Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, where animals have become so rare that they are kept as status symbols, as well as reminders of one's humanity. There are many ways that one can show a dystopia, but it all comes down to the people lacking their current freedoms and having a dependency on the government or corporate products. By that description, most of the world is a dystopia today, which is a conversation in itself. Yet, in a basic cyberpunk novel, this is to a shocking degree relative to today. If you want to nail that dystopian society, you need to talk about what the people have lost, what freedoms have been restricted, what common things have become so rare and valuable. Talk about how bad their priorities are. Depending on your story, you might be talking about the people rising up, rebelling against government and corporations in order to take back their freedoms, or you might be talking about how people have accepted this dystopia and their priorities are now on their looks, money and power. Now, science fiction doesn't necessarily focus on advanced technology, but cyberpunk does. Cyber comes from cybernetics, as I said earlier. Human augmentations are commonplace be they military-grade technology that make a person a more effective killing machine, or more consumer-oriented cybernetics that monitor one's health, work with other technology, and otherwise make their day-to-day -day chores easier. Talking about this technology though is never easy. First, let's discuss finding ideas. You have to think about innovation and the theme itself. How can you take what we have, make it better, and fit it into the story in an interesting way? We have cell phones, we read their screens, but what if the cell phones were implanted in our heads and the messages were projected to the surface of our eyes from inside our heads? You could make computers smaller, you can make characters open doors or turn on their coffee maker with thoughts read by implants. You can make cars fly and soldiers shoot bullets from their fingers. The style of technology also depends on the person who made it. A corporation might create something powerful and sleek, but a machine manufactured in some underground tech lab might be cheap and clunky looking, with exposed wires, but it still performs the same amazing functions. The device and its design all depend on your imagination and the characters who make it. 
when in doubt, look at popular science fiction movies and books for inspiration. As for describing your technology, try to compare it to something today. Is the machine the size of a refrigerator or the size of a green pea? Does it have flashing lights and make a noise similar to a car or microwave? You're not building such technology to explain it to the reader. You are just describing what it does, what it looks like, and how it behaves when it's working. Just because the world has such amazing technology doesn't mean you need to go into such great detail and fill your descriptions with all sorts of techno babble to make it seem realistic. What you need to do is simply compare it to something that we have today and the reader will understand. There is the willingness to suspension of disbelief, meaning that your reader is willing to believe anything you tell them as long as you present it in a easy enough way for them to understand. So if you can describe your technology and help them visualize it and understand how it works, that should be enough for the reader. A cyberpunk world always needs to have the criminal and political elements that often form the foundation of the story. You have different gangs interacting with each other, pulling off daring hasts in the face of the technologically terrifying repercussions that cyber-enhanced law enforcements bring their way. You will have corporations and oppressive governments doing their best to gain even more control over the people, seeking greater power, or securing the power they already have. It wouldn't be so hard to believe that the cyberpunk world has these competing powers of ingenious minds, desperate citizens, private army-wielding corporations, or greedy governments cracking down on possible uprisings. Politically speaking, a cyberpunk world is full of underhanded plots and violent power shifts. Depending on your story, you might have a character that leans towards the rebels working to overthrow the government and free the people, or leaning more towards the government stopping terrorists and protecting the people. You might have a story that fits perfectly in the middle, where these events happen outside the story and the focus is on a character just getting by. Either way, the cyberpunk world needs these plots and connections to make the world that much more immersive and interesting. You have to understand that in these types of world spaces, the political infrastructure is very fragile. There are a lot of people upset with what they have, which is why they're trying so hard to reach greater heights, and when they struggle to do so, then people become frustrated, then angry that they can't reach such prestige and power. So, it then turns to a political problem, where you have people clashing with each other. Often desires such as greed and justice battle it out, and sometimes the result isn't so good. I like to think that cyberpunk is very much like a dark fantasy story for science fiction. In these kind of world spaces, everything is not in these kind of world spaces, nobody's really happy, the ambiance isn't really happy. It's really just a miserable experience for everyone, even those in charge are not satisfied as they lose all connection of what good is when they have nothing but the best around them. With that in mind, the one thing that keeps readers going and the story alive is that flicker of hope, perhaps a morally great character that just might make a difference. Or perhaps it's just the connection between the reader and this character that keeps the story going. Now, addressing a smaller detail in your cyberpunk world space, let's talk about day-to-day -day life. What are your characters saying, wearing, and eating? Cyberpunk is known for having all sorts of slang thrown around to show that these are different times, but more than that, the clothing becomes more outrageous. Be it the styling or the colours, the average outfit looks way ahead of its time, or like an 80s nightmare. Of course, the characters will have hairstyles to match. If the characters' looks aren't so important, consider the music, the food, the drinks, the furniture, and all the mundane aspects of life that can be turned into weird features in your cyberpunk world. Whether the drinks have become a chemical sludge, or if insect meat is the primary diet, or drug consumption is not only a pastime for the low lives, but a necessary part of everyone's life in a messed up world. When working with any world that is different from our own, you cannot forget the simple details that make it so immersive. 
If you were only to talk about the bigger details that are core to the world space and not about how the average person does things during the day, you are missing out on a lot of world building elements. The reader will be then forced to assume that life in a cyberpunk world is not too different from their own, even though you might have in your imagination so many cool details that could make your world that much more interesting. So be sure to address that, talk about what the average person does, you can add these subtle details in different scenes throughout your story, but it certainly helps to make the reader understand that life in a cyberpunk world, although there are some core similarities, often the details and the appearance are completely different from what they are today. So in that sense, small details can make a big difference and they are crucial if you're looking to create an immersive story. Now, cyberpunk novels aren't all silly clothes and incredible technology. As I said earlier, cyberpunk stories are often set in a morally bankrupt world where almost everyone is greedy and ready to betray their friends for a better laugh. It's all about preserving their reputation, which often isn't a good reputation. When morals and values are lacking, the world seems hopeless and there isn't an ideal protagonist. Murphy's Law is in full effect. The reader dreads the tense situations which arise because they are afraid of what the next shock will be. Often the result is disappointing or depressing, so it is not surprising that cyberpunk endings are sad or unsatisfying. As the writer, your story is your own. You can easily create a cyberpunk story where the world is saved in the end. But if realism is what you're aiming for, then the best ending one can hope for is where good guys are alive and there is a chance for them to have a better life, no matter what level of the class system they end up in. It is hard to focus on the psychology of man in such a dystopian society without expecting such a grim ending. You'll be talking about how the world has become numb to so many atrocities, how they are so easily swayed by powerful figures. You can create a happier story, and unfortunately if you do try too hard to make your story a bit more upbeat, you might create a more utopian-like world space, and thus the story itself will read more like a, a science fiction like any other, rather than a cyberpunk novel. So you have to decide whether you want your world space to look like a cyberpunk world, or do you want your story to read like a cyberpunk novel. And since we are here at the final thoughts, I'm here to say that I'd rather have a story that looks like a cyberpunk world than reads like one. I'm typically a soft-hearted individual when it comes to stories, even though I've read quite a few ones which were grim and didn't end so well. I'd prefer in my own way to write a story that I was happy with. When I spend more time working on a project, I like to have a happy ending, as I said in one of my earlier videos. I admire the cyberpunk genre and I understand what it's all about. It's not about having a nice ending where everybody has the best life ever. It's about the decline of morality. It's about talking about the way the world is heading, how politics can easily turn into tyrannical governments, and how readily people can accept them. Unfortunately, that's just not the kind of story I like to write because I don't like to dwell on those things too long. And writing a novel in such a genre requires you to do so. Things though I do admire about the cyberpunk genre as well is that you have a lot of down-to-earth characters. There is that sense of camaraderie as people work together to make things better for themselves. Not everybody is going to stab you in the back in the cyberpunk world, just most of them. But when you find those individual characters who mean well and are doing the best they can and are helping each other, it's a heartwarming experience that is made even more powerful, more impactful when it's set in such a dystopian world. If you're an experienced cyberpunk story writer, let me know your thoughts as well as some advice you would give beginner writers in the comments below. And if you are new to the genre and have a few more questions, be sure to leave those in the comments as well. If you are interested in joining my writer's workshop and receiving personal tutoring as well as help in writing your novel, there's a link to that in the description below as well as a link to a free course if you want to see my teaching methods. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for listening, and as always, 
Good day, good night, and happy writing.